recording now. Um, again, thanks for joining. And today's agenda has been uh, uh, shared on the screen. Um, uh, we have the action items as usual. Uh, we have shared the results of the poll. Uh, there was a meeting with the working group chairs and we can talk a little bit about it. Um, I did send an email. I'll elaborate on that email. Uh, I think that was the item um, on the discussion number two. And number three, we have uh, a little bit of um, diving in on the action item ordering. And uh, Tony has volunteered to talk about this. Um, so during the meeting with the, with the joint uh, uh, working, working group chairs, uh, we discussed how do we want to progress the solution documents. We have some, some thoughts we want to share with you, and we will talk about it in item number four. And lastly, as usual, we'll open it up if anybody wants to add to the agenda anything. Okay, uh, so let's uh, move on. Um, let me switch the tab. Okay, I think I need to edit this. Um, so the first item I have here um, on the action item list is a discussion on how do we evaluate competing proposals we have uh you know the poll has concluded um with with a with a certain uh, uh outcome um we will talk about you know um um how do we want to progress on that front and we will come back to competing proposals based on that uh, so i'll uh it was on pause until the poll concludes and uh, you know i think we have uh, an action item on solution authors uh, so Okay, we will be talking about this action item on the next uh, item on the agenda. Uh, the second uh, one is the ordering of action. I think it's on the agenda today. Um, Tony will yeah. be talking about it. Tarek, Tarek. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll assign. I think it's already assigned, but you're right. We will talk about it in the next item, but uh, it's already done. Okay. I, yeah. mean, I mean, the assignment is already done. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, second item I did uh, mention that uh, it's on the agenda. Uh, so let me just note it down that today. We will be talking about it. <coughs> okay, um, so this action item we will be talking about, it's related to the, um, again, the poll results. Um, um, for now, um, you know, I'll, I'll just put in a comment that uh, related results conclusion. But it's important that we have that action item. It's been ongoing for a while now, since July or even before July. Uh, but, you know, again, uh, uh, the poll was triggered after 
not much action on this one. Uh, the next action item um, after this is um, on the authors of the first nibble draft. And let me just jump to the bottom. Okay, there was an action item on myself uh, to send an email to the lead editor. And I admit that I haven't done that. Um, I am not sure if uh, Kiriti is attending today. No, he's not. Um, I'm happy to carry the action item uh, for, you know, and report back for next week. But if anyone else has an update, feel free. As far as I know, we ha the authors haven't done anything either. Okay. Uh, this is it in terms of open action items. I'll just save that state. All right, and we can go back to the agenda and talk about the results of the poll. Okay, um, I am moving a little bit fast. I'm happy to be slower. Um, so feel free to stop me if you, oh, I was gonna say, yeah, Tony, go ahead. I see that some you raised, uh, you wanting to ask a question or something like that. No, I, I just wanted to kvetch about the poll. Um, I thought that you raised the poll that you raised was entirely appropriate and clear. And the results that I, I saw were largely clear. Um, and then certain people decided that they had to misinterpret things intentionally. And that just muddied the waters a great deal and made the poll rather useless. And the, the intent of the poll was still clear. I mean, we seem to be headed down everyone wanting a single solution. Indeed, uh, that was the intention of the poll. It uh, was never the intention to allow multiple solutions, but, uh, but rather, you know, the process of bringing about this single solution, we had two uh, options and we polled uh, for how do we bring about that single solution. Um, so before we talk about the poll, uh, let me talk about why did we create the poll? Um, because it's important to uh, you know, look back and then look forward. I think you know, we all know that there were um, multiple competing solutions uh, brought about to the working group and uh, the chairs are aware of them and, and in fact uh, steward had compiled um, you know a thorough list of all the solutions and and um, we met multiple weeks and uh, we were uh, incentivizing the authors to uh, meet and discuss collaboration um, because the intention of the working group uh, and the chairs was uh, to come to a unified solution i mean we, that's what our to come to a single solution, let me be more accurate. Um, we don't want to standardize multiple if we don't have to. Um, uh, so we did put an action item and you saw that I was brushing it up uh, um, when I was going over the action items. Um, and um, that was not, there was not much traction for a couple of times or multiple times that we met so the only way i mean we we saw from the chair's side was to create a poll and ask the working group as a whole and this, the design team as well so we put two options on the table and, and we tried to be as much as possible careful with the wording um, the options were reviewed by all the chairs and they blessed the options um, Indeed, I think, um, you know, the interpretations, um, you know, um, thrown may have muddied the water. Um, 
but um, on Tuesday, the, the working group chairs met and we reviewed the results. And uh, we couldn't draw a, a consensus, a rough consensus on the results um, that uh, you know we collected. Um, that said, while the poll was ongoing, uh, somehow um, you know uh, this, the different solution drafts got uh, excited and they started to work uh, behind the scenes, and the chairs got to know about that. Um, there is not much uh, pro uh, reporting done to the working group on the progress of that collaboration. Um, so the the like I said, the poll was created to uh, resolve the collaboration not happening. But if the collaboration is happening, we want to know about that. We want to make it uh, in the clear and the open. Uh, so we do ask uh, the different. Um, uh, collaborators of the solution drafts that are meeting to report back. And even if there is no uh, agreement, we would like to still know. And that might uh, trigger uh, the working group chairs to, uh, you know, uh, discuss this poll again, uh, because we haven't concluded really, we could not conclude. Um, so yeah, the, the action item, uh, as Loa said, we want to put it back on the solution authors to uh, report back on the progress of their discussions. And uh, I want to go to the queue and get the question from Tony. So I'll take this opportunity to report back. Um, so we are continuing to discuss, we are continuing to make progress, um, but it is not clear that this is necessarily going to succeed. Uh, so, I think that it would be a mistake for you to block everything waiting for us. Yeah, I don't think we, uh, we wanted to block. I, I think we wanted to hear the report and, uh, discuss the you know, next steps. Uh, at least this is my thinking and let me see if, uh, Loa and Stewart and others have any uh, different perspective. But we wanted to hear the report really, Tony. So thanks for sharing. Uh, and I would like to make it uh, on record. Um, so let me add notes here. Mm. Okay, I see Loa's uh, wanting to hold the mic. So go ahead, Loa. Uh, yeah, I just uh, want to say that uh, if, even if uh, we're not sure that we will succeed in uh, collaboration and merging on, on documents uh, or whatever you are actually discussing, uh, we, we, we need to hear about it. Otherwise, we might actually take the wrong, wrong, uh, wrong actions. And I think there are more discussions going on um, that I'm not sure actually includes uh, Tony and people from Uniper. So I think I am actually expecting uh, more reports from others. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else wants to report? No. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, I, I think the action item is clear uh, from the poll. I can bring up the email if you want, but I'm sure that you've seen uh, uh, the, the text that we shared. Um, we're asking, uh, you know, the results of the discussion to, you know, uh, be made public. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if you want an, an ETA lower on this. Um, Put an ETA of when they could share the results. Um, 
Uh, I'm not sure I want to do that now. Maybe we can do that next week if necessary. Uh, if we get enough reports, it's probably fine. And I could actually just say also that, uh, yeah, you are allowed to report on mail if you want to. You don't need to wait until the next meeting. Okay. Okay. All right, we can move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the discussion on the action item ordering. And I'll give the mic to Tony on this. And Thank you. Will you be sharing? Uh, I can stop sharing. Yes, please. All right, let's see if I can get this right. Yay. All right, can everybody see slides? Real estate. These are actually the painted ladies. They were a tourist attraction in San Francisco. All right, I, I, I thought you did a great line in slides. You win the art competition for sure. <coughs> All right. That's a compliment. Thank you. Uh, so I wanted to talk about design principles rather than ordering, because ordering is a consequence of our design principles. Um, some of the principles that we have are pretty straightforward. Uh, we want generality. We want to support as much fun different functionality as possible. That makes our solution more useful, more valuable. Uh, we want performance. We want fast execution. We know that if we have slow execution, i.e. everybody punts every packet, um, this is not going to be very useful in production for our, a vast majority of traffic. Uh, so we do want performance. And we want simplicity. We want a simple encoding. Uh, complex encoding helps no one and works against performance too. Now, these principles are not uniformly uh, orthogonal. Um, we cannot have full generality and full performance. So we have to make some trade-offs. And, and, and the result of that is basically that we have to order our principles and decide what order, what trade-offs we're going to make. Um, so, uh, you know, the real discussion is what do we feel, feel is appropriate? Um, there are many things that are possible. We might choose to maximize generality. And if we do that, then we probably have to have a list of actions encoded in the packet. Um, presumably that's going to end up in ISD. And this might look like a list of opcodes. And to be fully general, that might include things that are actually in PSD. And that might mean that execution has to bounce back and forth between ISD and PSD, and that even a hop by hop node has to look at PSD. Uh, that might well be performance limiting. So we might want to think hard about that. Are you willing to sacrifice performance to get generality? We could flip this around. What happens if we think performance is more important than generality? Let's maximize performance. Let's put ISD before PSD. Let's evaluate bit, uh, bit catalogs in the order of the LSE and then least significant bit first within a bit catalog. And opcodes we evaluate in the order found in the packet. Or maybe we want simplicity. If we are willing to sacrifice performance to get simplicity, we might get some, some something similar. But if we put even generality more important than performance, then maybe we want to put ISD before PSD, eliminate bit catalogs, 
and just evaluate opcodes and only do it in the order present in the packet. So these are some of the options that we have. Now, this is not even exhaustive. Um, there are other things that we, we could think about. Maybe our highest priority is bandwidth minimalism. We want to minimize the bits that we put on the wire. That certainly contributes to performance, but it doesn't necessarily mean uh, forwarding performance. Um, maybe we want to do reuse our design. We want to leverage as much path, past work as possible. Maybe that's the highest order. So my question to, you, to the group is, what is the ordering of our design principles? And how do we make this decision rapidly without confusion and make a decision that we all commit to and don't keep going around and around on? The floor is open. I think, uh, is there a middle ground where you have both Tony in there, like both bullets, the optimizing for um, the bits and uh, I think the next bullet you had uh, um, uh, was uh, engineering principles or I, um, yeah, so the reason I, re I raised this is and we noticed in SRV6, the, you know, they were trying to um, um, compress the, the number of bits they need uh, to optimize uh, forwarding or actually to pack in more SIDs, for example. So, I mean, it's still important that we don't uh, bloat the forwarding uh, instruction. I should have raised my hand, apologize. Stuart? So as we think about if 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 SRV six is is a development model that we and, and I mean it in no other um, uh, context, then if you recall what they did was they went for reuse was the first thing they went for. Then they um, went for adding features to it, and then they realised that they needed to backtrack and optimise a whole load of the baggage away in order to make it a lot more compact. So, you know, sometimes it's a journey, unfortunately. Um, I, I'm always minded, though, that this is a development of MPLS, and MPLS really uh, abstracted away a load of stuff to the control plane, which gave it a lot of power, and uh, went for essentially uniformity in everything. So if we're in favor of abstracting everything away, that would suggest that the right answer is Robert's proposal. Forget about ordering, because that's no longer relevant. It's all pushed to the control plane. Mm. Well, maybe it's not all quite pushed to the control plane, if I may continue. Um, but maybe the definition of an object is pushed to the control plane. If I understood Robert's proposal, it pushed all definitions to the control plane, and that included ordering. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that, that may, his proposal may or may not be the finishing point, but maybe it's the start. Maybe it's one of the starting points. Um, it would would that require you know a, a for a transport label for uh, each fec one to indicate that we want actions and one to indicate that there are not actions and i think that that was the challenge is uh you know you need to, uh, st state will explode in in forwarding in lsrs and so on that's a challenge well I mean, just thinking out the box, just thinking sort of off the cuff here, you could steal the lowest bit. If you could live with only 19-bit labels, you could steal the lowest bit. Um, 
or I suppose it's pretty horrible, but you could decide that no one goes 256 hops inside a um, an MPLS network, and so you could steal a bit from TTL. Oh, yeah, we're re-engineering the action indicators now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm you know, just answering you know, the question that's put. If I understood Robert's proposal, um, basically there would be a special label and a handle that pointed to pointed each node to the actions that it should take. And that handle could be anywhere in the label stack. I could certainly have some sympathy for that sort of approach. If you recall, um, I had an I had a proposal very very early days of this where the whole thing was done with pointers. Yep. So Tony, is you're putting it as as you know? Should we evaluate uh, different ways of uh, different proposals? Is that you know, I, I don't know why you bring in the, I, you started with the action, uh, network action ordering problem, and we're ending up with, uh, you know, how do we want to indicate actions? No, I'm, we started off with what are our optimal design principles? And we've discussed that a little bit. And then we came to the question of, well, what if we optimized for pushing things into the control plane? And we have a proposal that is a fine example of that. Yeah, every proposal has pros and cons. I think that evaluation we haven't done yet. And uh, that was one thing that we wanted to talk about is how do we evaluate the different ways that put forward and and maybe it's the right, the right time to start to talk about that. So what are our design principles? What, what do we think is optimal? What I want out of the design is very different than what Stuart seems to want. That's okay, but you know, we have to come to some trade-off here. And indeed we'll have the, you know, we can have the discussion, Tony. I, 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 I was simply challenging, um, you know, some of the existing, um, um, ap approaches by trying to remember what the core properties of the protocol we're modifying are. Exactly. But I'm not going to die in any ditches for anything these days. So, um, does that suggest that there is another dimension missing in our um, trade-off matrix? Yeah, I mean, the design, maybe the design uh, um, principles, as he put it, maybe we need to write it down what, so that we come up with a solution based on the design. So, I, I think... The, and I'm not quite sure I got it right. The, the key difference is, it, are the actions programmatic or are the actions, um, what's the term? Um, I'm trying to think what the, what the right term is for something where everyone knows what the action is simply by inspecting the packet with no other information. So the, the V6 school is very much in the, if you look at that packet, you know exactly what to do with it because, um, uh, you know, it could have popped up anywhere in the network and it would be the same. Whereas the MPLS school is, you can only tell what to do with this packet if you've been told how to deal with this packet. And I know there's a bit of a trend between one and the other in the SR camp. There are a trend toward the you know, retrenchment back to public definitions of everything. But I don't know whether that's right or whether that's, that serves us best or not. I would call that property self-encoded. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think you're right. Yep.
I'm sure others must have views on this. Or views on how we move forward. Would it make sense for us to try to sort through our design principles and come up with an optimal ordering? So it would make sense, but the best way to make to do that, I, I, I that's not an arrogant thing to say, a good way of doing that would be to try and solve some real problems and see how each of the approaches stacked up. Otherwise, it's all in the abstract, isn't it? I'm happy to have abstract discussions. Yeah, but the trouble with that, I mean, trouble with completely abstract discussions, I mean, and then they're fine. I'm happy with abstract discussions normally, right? The problem with it is you don't really test where the rubber meets the road in this in the same way as, and you don't find out what the errors are until you actually go and use it to build something. So, yeah. so you see where I'm coming with this? That that, that, that maybe yeah. we should try and build some core examples and run the different solutions against them yeah i mean we don't there don't have to be full solutions or anything but just examine the sort of you know a sketch of what it would look like in each in each way against a couple of key uh, things we might want to do we have a number of use cases already in a draft indeed so why don't we pick a couple pick all of them i suppose but whatever yeah pick a couple and see how they look different with each of these criteria. Uh, and the reason I'm saying this is because we need some evidence to make the decision on. Uh, I, I'd rather have evidence than people's sort of um, guesses. If nothing else, it might eliminate a couple of the of the um, of, of the of the corners. So um, I don't know if Tony wants to do all uh, you know all the different ones, uh, or is it a, an invitation to the different authors to uh, contribute, you know, into this uh, effort? You know, let's say we take the test case. We could continue discussion right here, right now. Sure. Yeah, I don't see, you know, uh, much traction from everyone. Um, but you, you understand why I, I think it would be, a, a, you know, the, 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 um, why I think that solving real problems might be the best way to tease out what the, uh, what the differences are and what the impacts are. Yeah. So oh, we better do it. So I pulled up the use case draft and I propose we start talking about them. Okay. And section 2.2 .2 is in situ OAM. What would be optimal for IOAM? Well, it's going to be PSD for sure. Greg raised his hand. Greg? Yes, I have. Um, okay, so uh, I am. Um, I am has um, several trace options. And um, okay, I didn't want to uh, uh, start talking about a new proposal before I upload it. I will upload it probably um, by end of the week. Uh, the idea is. Um, RFC 9197, um, IAM data types describes not only uh, informational elements, but several IAM trace options. And uh, the common uh, characteristic of all these trace options um, is that operational state and telemetry information is stored uh, within the packet. Uh, probably can refer to this packet as a trigger packet. Um, another proposal that is almost uh, ready to be published uh, through ISG review, I think it uh, should be complete and approved, uh, is um, IEM uh, Direct Expert. Uh, IEM Direct Expert includes 
IAM characteristic information uh, with a, a profile of operational state and IAM data to be collected on a node, whether it's hop by hop or end, edge to edge. Uh, and uh, optional information uh, as uh, flow uh, identifier and sequence number. So, um, and uh, the processing of uh, requested information is not determined by IAM, uh, but can be determined by a local policy. So, I think that uh, even though um, pre-allocated or um, uh, incremental, uh, trace options uh, that use user packet space might be interesting in some environments. Uh, in other environments, for example, as deterministic networking, um, ability to export information out of the band, out of the data plane uh, of the user uh, flow uh, is beneficial. So if that is uh, acceptable uh, view, then uh, I think that for the um, efficiency, their information for IEM uh, direct export can be in stack data. And that effect, well, that's basically what would be uh, the message in a new contribution, uh, a new draft uh, that I will upload by end of the week. And uh, would like uh, already ask for um, presentation slot in the uh, next meeting, uh, whenever it will be next week or week after. So um, again, to sum, for IAM, the answer whether it's ISD or PSD, I would say it depends. It's something that uh, we can discuss. It's actually IOAM application specific, if that's the right word to use. You know, depending on what you want to do with IOAM, you may prefer one or the other. Um, yes, actually, that's a good point. And uh, we don't have to say it's always this way. What I was looking at as an example is how uh, BFD over MPLS uh, was standardized. So even though um, BFD based specification RFC 5880 defines two BFD modes, isynchronous and demand, for um, 5884 only one mode was selected. So we might decide how to handle it. But uh, I, I agree, Stuart, that it, it could be that uh, we define uh, two encapsulations and uh, they can be used uh, by operator to their liking. Okay, we have Rakesh in the queue. Um, go ahead, Rakesh. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I think uh, we made a presentation uh, on um, how IOM can be carried uh, in a data packet. Um, it was using a draft JAX proposal uh, with uh, some network actions uh, in stack and uh, the data would be post stack uh, IOM data. So, it goes in line with the overall idea of um, having network accents um, somewhere in stack and then the ancillary data, uh, uh, depending on the use cases, can be in stack or post stack um, and that's justified by the applications. There was one way it was explained in that particular presentation, but um, uh, uh, these are the basically the, the approaches or the, the ideas for that from our side. Okay. Thank you, Rakesh. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Jambi. Um, I believe that uh, RFC 9197 does not uh, 
support uh, separating uh, IAM uh, trace options descriptor and um, IAM data. So uh, it's assumed that it's all contiguous. May I answer? Uh, Rakesh, uh, Lawa, you're next to it. Is, are you okay with Rakesh taking? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rakesh. Yeah, so uh, Greg, uh, they were not separate. They were all together. Uh, there was just a um, network action indicator in the stack, but uh, the post stack, uh, the whole trace option and the, everything was uh, contiguous together. Thank you for clarification. Okay, uh, Loa. So maybe a question to both Rakesh and, uh, and Greg. Do I understand you correctly if you're saying that IOAM network actions might use either PSD or ISD or both? Okay, Rakesh, can you, you can oh, uh, I'll be the second. Um, so the example that we have uh, shown two weeks ago was uh, the data for IOM. All of it was post stack. Uh, Greg is bringing an interesting proposal to have in stack data as well. Uh, so I think it will probably come down to the use cases and what could be optimal. Okay. Yes, I, I agree with Rakesh summary. Okay. I, I am raising my hand and uh, I want to go back to the use case that Tony uh, 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 raised, which is the IOM and against the solution from uh, Robert uh, Razuk. And uh, just for refresher, I'm going to flash my screen and show the draft. Uh, but I'm going to challenge that it does not address the IOM use case. And, uh, you know, I, 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 the reason being that um, with IOM, we are uh, collecting information from nodes that are traversed. So we want this information to be uh, carried uh, with the packet. So we, without a place in the packet to carry this information, um, I don't know how would you, uh, you know, uh, uh, relay the IOM data. Um, so you need a, a place either in the ISD or the PSD to put uh, or collect the information or record the information that you're asking. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we are uh, stuck with a, uh, you know, a solution that, you know, can put metadata inside the, so inside the packet and the nodes traversed can update this metadata. It's, it's not just the ingress adding a placeholder, it's the nodes, uh, you know, recording this or populating that information. So that's my, I think we need to, you know, I, I can I can generate an email uh, challenging this proposal for IOM, uh, IOM use case, um, but, you know, that's my opinion. I don't see, uh, you know, Robert uh, in among the participants today, so he cannot uh, answer back. But at least this is my perspective. So I don't think such a proposal may be easily addressing the IOEM use case. Okay, uh, I'll stop here and go back to the queue and uh, Greg, you're next. Okay, yes, uh, thank you. Um, I just, um, okay, so if we are, um, we'll continue discussion of Robert's uh, proposal on the list, that's uh, fine. Uh, I just wanted uh, to stress that um, I am, uh, has several trace options, or we can uh, look at it as modes of operation, so that uh, indeed in some data 
uh, requested data collected in the same uh, user packet where their uh, request is uh, located. Uh, and uh, there are another proposal, direct expert, where the processing of requested information is um, uh, according to the local policy. So that uh, effectively, for example, it could be export raw data or uh, do some processing locally and then export uh, performance metrics. So I think that, that is uh, important distinction and uh, I'll intend to um, discuss it uh, at the next meeting uh, using our proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Greg. Who are you? You're next. Yeah, I just want to raise awareness that we have a, another proposal called the postcard based telemetry, uh, which uh, requires only a single trigger bit, um, or it's no, not even a bit. It could be uh, some kind of signal, like some special um, uh, purpose label in the context of the MPOS. Just to, to tell the control, uh, just to tell the device that um, some data should be collected for this packet and uh, sent out to some collectors. So, as for what data should be collected, uh, it's uh, totally controlled by configured by the control plane. So this is kind of a lead to Robert's um, proposal. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the different IO. Direct export, they all uh, involve uh, instruction header. Um, the difference is one, you don't include data visit, and another is actually just add the collect data to the packet. But for the instruction header itself, it's, um, uh, it's, um, for the direct export, it still could be as large as from 8 by to 16 bytes. So, just for the size, I don't think it's proper to include it in the label stack. Uh, so uh, for this different IOM options, I still think the best way is just to put them, uh, encode them in the post stack data field. So that's my comments. Thank you, Hoyu. Uh, Tony, you're next. Thank you. Uh, question to Greg. Um, so if you've got multiple different kinds of uh, IOAM flavors, um, and presumably multiple of them can be encoded uh, simultaneously in the packet, um, do you, are you foreseeing any ordering issues? And in particular, are there any cases where you would want to execute PSD actions before ISD actions? Uh, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, Greg, you want to take that question? Ah, yes. Oh, oh, good. Thank you, Tony. Um, it's an interesting question. I don't, um, I cannot imagine uh, the situation where um, different uh, information uh, will be uh, requested um, in the same um, data flow uh, or different uh, information uh, from the transit node. <coughs> um, in terms of ordering, so uh, that's information gathering. It um, uh, IAM does not include actions, well, unless we consider uh, some. Um, Proposal that is um, turns IAM into active OAM, but uh, we can discuss it whether we leave it outside the scope of MPLS. Um, so at this time, I don't see that there could be a dependency uh, in this scenario that you describe uh, if it happens. So, yes, potentially that's possible that. Um, different um, trace options, if we 
entertain the idea that uh, for increment uh, for preallocated uh, trace option, we use uh, PSD, and for um, direct expert, we use uh, Instax data, and both trace options are uh, used concurrently in the same uh, data packet. Um, so I don't think that um, would create any dependency on which uh, option executed. So uh, what data is uh, collected first? Okay. Um, thank you, Greg. Loa, you're next. Thank you. Uh, so first little bit for Greg. Uh, if you say that potential that is possible, whatever it is, that always worries me because it always comes back in bite. So, sooner or later, that potential is actually realized. Uh, so I have a question for clarification and actually Greg Rakes and how you. Uh, I think I heard, but I don't, not sure from whom. But are you actually excluding ISD for IOAM? Uh, I, uh, can I ask, answer the question? Yeah, go um, ahead. Yeah, so I think as for the for the current defined um, IOAM options, I think. They, they all should be encoded post deck just because it has a well defined header format and so it's on, there's no holes in, in it um, and it's um, you know um, uh, it's a uh, quite long usually is at least eight bytes at so the most proper place to po to put them is post deck Okay, thank you. Rakesh, you're next. Now, actually, uh, I think the will ask uh, the question. So if I may answer. Uh, can I give Rakesh a chance? Uh, ah, okay. He was interrupted by or you. Uh, hi, hi. So uh, to Tony's um, question and a few others. Um, so I, I think the way that uh, IOM trace points are defined in IPPM RFC now is that uh, they are unique test points and say capture the timestamp or capture the interface ID and whatnot. So they, if if it's a post tag data, then all of them would be in a certain order. So there is a in highest drop, there is an extension header and they are in order. So you go and process in that order. So that will give us one order. The second order, if you need to do PSD and ISD, the of course will give you the order on the stack. And the third point is that, um, just to step back a little bit, is that IOM uh, data is uh, supported uh, or is meant for all kinds of networks, could be IP, or MPLS, or SR, or SRV6, IPv6. And there are various encapsulations uh, being defined for them, just to say that there is an IOM uh, in it. But I would assume that the implementation wise, there would be an IOM block. Uh, so all of the encapsulation just says that there is an IOM, but then there is IOM a block or module that's on the hardware or software that's sitting, would be just processing it uh, uh, irrespective of the data plane. So we only have to worry about what are the specifics about MPLS data plane that uh, uh, the new MNA has to uh, uh, support. Thanks. I uh, I am gonna go next because uh, you know I, w I was raising my hand and then I'll give you the turn, Tony. Um, so as co-author of the use case draft, I think what we wanted to cover, I mean I'm hearing from Greg there are different modes. I don't think we itemized all the modes in the use cases draft. So I want to give an action items on the authors of the use case draft to see which which of the modes we want to address or maybe all of the modes and make sure that you know um the ioem modes are covered um why you is talking about some extra use case where you have a trigger and telemetry being streamed out of every node um 
I, I don't think we have that in the use cases, so maybe we, we need to um, add it if we want to solve it. Uh, but I agree with Rakesh that we don't want to reinvent what IOM means. Uh, I think we're defining a new encapsulation for it. That's it. Thanks. And Tony, you're next. Thank you. Um, so to Rakesh, um, please remember that the point of this discussion is to talk about how we want to deal with ordering. And we should not be assuming any particular solution with respect to ordering. Um, the, Greg has indicated that things are order independent um, and within IOAM, I will easily believe that um, things get, might get more interesting as we talk about what happens with cross product of different use cases, uh, which we should do momentarily. Um, the interesting point here is if we do want to maximize generality, um, we cannot assume that PSD is executed after ISD. Uh, we could have a situation where somebody wanted to execute an ISD operation, then a PSD operation, then a different ISD operation, then a different PSD operation. Are we going to support that? We have to agree. I don't want to, so I don't think generality is uh, the highest order principle. Thank you. Uh, Greg, you're next. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, so um, I just want to get back a uh, uh, question from uh, Law. Um, what I tried to uh, describe or I was uh, uh, thinking out loud uh, in response uh, to Tony's question on multiple trace options, I think that uh, we can uh, mitigate this risk uh, easily if we uh, uh, limit uh, that only one IAM trace option can be used uh, in a given uh, packet. So um, then um, that's probably will s simplify um, uh, this um, significantly. Uh, okay, um, on Tarek's action point for uh, extending a uh, use case document with at least uh, giving a brief uh, characteristic to IAM trace options, I will take it uh, probably just give me like two weeks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Rakesh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so just uh, Tony to answer your question, I totally agree with you. MPLS data plane should not uh, put new requirement or restrictions on the ordering of what is already there in the IOM RFC 91. 97 it's uh, it's explains what data field means and how they should be processed and stuff so yeah we should not uh, come up with a new um, a dimension to it thanks okay why you go ahead yeah thanks uh i, I think uh, yeah for the mps network actions uh the the execution order as doesn't rely uh depend on is uh Location you, you asked uh, in stack or post stack um, because uh, uh, for for one example if uh, we use uh, IOM trees it must be PSD because uh, its size because of its size. Uh, however, for the IOM, you know the 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 processing of it is uh, totally depend on what data you want to collect. Um, there could be um, data for the ingress interface time stamp uh, and the egress um, interface time, time stamp. So you want to you, um, collect these two data, it simply means that the lifetime for the uh, header, uh, this uh, option header, this header processing is just throughout the, it's throughout the entire um, life cycle in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the device. It's from start to the, to the end. And uh, similarly, I think uh, um, each other headers processing has its uh, uh, scope or range. It could be limited to the ingress side or it's uh, limited to the egress side or, or both. So the, the, this, uh, their range can be overlapped or interleaved. So that's, that's just, uh, you know, for, for them, it's, uh, uh, but we cannot just say enforce what's their order is. They don't have order at all. 
there. So I think uh, ultimately it's um, it's depend on the you know the each use case and if uh, they have uh, dependencies between different use cases, then there might be other um, use case related document to to tell the implementer what's their execution order. But uh, this uh, should be independent of the order they appear in a single packet. Okay. I think it's a it was a useful exercise taking one use case and then, you know, uh, dissecting it and seeing uh, uh, how does it fare against the different solutions. Um, I think if we take another use case, it might also enlighten us more. Tony, you're in the queue, and I'll give you a chance. Go ahead. I was going to suggest exactly that. The next use case in the document is 2.3, network slicing. And I will ask people what happens if we interleave network slicing and IOAM. Uh, so I'm gonna, okay, Greg, you raised your hand before me. Go ahead. Ah, sorry. <laughs> um, I, don't see any dependency because um, the network slicing is, uh, as I understand, it's a, a mapping information, and IEM again, uh, it does not affect forwarding um, decision. So I think that doesn't seem to be any uh, dependency on the order of execution. Uh, um, yeah, I, I was going to say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm next in the queue. So the, the, the network slicing will give a special treatment to the packet, um, be it, um, in terms of buffering or, um, QS scheduling and so on. Um, but it might also, uh, make decisions in terms of forwarding, although that is not, um, ironed out now, uh, it might affect the next hop selection. Um, um, so in that case, I tend to agree with Tony that uh, we want um, to take that into consideration, like uh, the uh, what slice are we in and uh, then record the IOEM data. And maybe that's, uh, hmm, okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And uh, going back to the queue, I see Tony in the queue. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Um, network slicing can drive next top changes. So I think you would want to necessarily do slicing before you took an exit interface trace. Um, so I think there is a dependency there. Um, this is one that's simple to resolve because I think that the, the uh, the slice identifier is probably ISD. Uh, the trace information is PSD, so you end up ISD, PSD, and that sort of naturally falls out. I'm done, thank you. Rakesh, you're next. Uh, I actually agree with Greg uh, that they are independent. The reason why we say they are independent is that um, uh, if you look at the trace points and see what is being asked, is like what is your incoming interface, what is your outgoing interface, what is your receive timestamp, transmit timestamp. So some of it is given that if you're asking for the outgoing information, it is assumed that uh, you would only know after you've done the forwarding lookup and slice lookup, and this is the only time you find out what is uh, your egress stuff. So from that point of view, if you look at the definition of the trace points, you would know that uh, this is, uh, uh, um, you know, how it should be processed and when that information would be available to you. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Rakesh. Jimmy? Yes, uh, actually my understanding is uh, similar to what uh, Greg and Rakesh mentioned. And IOM actually does not impact the natural slicing specific packet forwarding behavior, right? 
Well, on the other hand, uh, natural slicing may have some impact to the scope of the IOM. Uh, so the IOM, like the statistics of the packet or some of the other information to be collected, may need to take the natural slicing information into consideration. But uh, my understanding is this is not like a, an ordering of the actions, but like a, a Either you can uh, perform an IOM in first or other slicing based uh, forwarding lookup first. Both uh, approach would uh, give you the same result. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, for you, you next. Yeah, I just want to say I totally agree with uh, Greg, Rakesh, and Jim said actually, um, the for the uh, IOM, uh, the, there's an assumption on that. Yes, uh, the slicing can change the forwarding behavior, but that's exactly what's expected by IOM. You know, if if IOM want to record the egress port, for example, it's assumed that the egress port has been decided by whatever policies. So there's a there's a dependency, but it's already implied by the solution itself. Thank you. Okay. I think I'm going to go next in the queue because I remember raising. So, um, um, I was going to say that I'm, you know, I, based on what I heard from Huayu and Rakesh, that they, there is an assumption that uh, IOM is being invoked at the, you know, a, after. So, that's what they said after and last step. So, you're, you're, you're basically dictating order. So, Action uh, network slicing comes before action IOM. So that that's what uh, that's the only thing I, actually I was after is you know uh, you are dictating an order some implicit order. Thank you, um, Tony. Thank you. Um, so I dispute what Jimmy said. I think that ordering does matter. That network slicing will change the next top, and that will change the IOM results. Um, moreover, I don't believe that implicit ordering is sufficient. That is to say, we cannot publish a bunch of different RFCs and expect everyone to read all of them and understand all of them perfectly and um, be able to infer what the ordering is. Um, I think we have to be careful and say something so that everybody understands what to do. Uh, that's the only way we're going to get consistency and interoperability. Now, do we have to do a full um, uh, matrix of all possible permutations and define what the ordering is? No, I think we want to define simpler mechanisms for doing describing that ordering, and that is what we're trying to do here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Greg, you're next. Yes, thank you. Um, I think that um, IOM uh, processing in the node um, has to be uh, considered as a continuous in time because um, the information that can be uh, requested uh, includes uh, ingress information and egress information. So, um, and for example, the timestamp can be taken on ingress interface and on egress. And uh, to make most accurate or more accurate uh, delay measurements, uh, it's recommended that uh, these timestamps are taken uh, when the reception and uh, of their first octet and transmission of first octet uh started so uh in in effect uh what tony suggests yes uh there seems to be a dependency and uh, that it is beneficial that uh the node recognizes that there is a iam um, request for information uh at the same time i can um uh, imagine implementation uh, that will do some uh, information preparation that might be used uh, 
uh, if uh, IEM information is requested. So again, uh, there are certain aspects that uh, would be specific for implementations. So some implementations were more suitable and will uh, behave uh, more and produce more accurate uh, information and some probably would not. But uh, that not only how we process um, net, uh, MPLS network actions, but it's more like uh, what equipment is possible in terms of taking accurate information on uh, very short notice, or actually might, might be doing it proactively just in case. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rakesh. Yeah, just to, um, um, just trying to understand uh, Tony's point uh, and in terms of translating that into a requirement. So, uh, is it um, that uh, network action must appear in the order that uh, network slice is done first and then IOM or vice versa, depending on the expected behavior, or is it that uh, the procedure uh, explains that uh, this should be done uh, um, ahead of this? So is it, a, is it a solution ordering that must be specified or is it a procedure ordering that must be specified? Okay, thank you, Rakesh. I th Tony is right next and he can ask, take that question. Yeah, so I'm not sure I understand exactly what you're suggesting. Um, it's up to the, the MNA solution to define what the order of actions should be and uh, it needs to specify. Right, and it may relegate some of that control to the ingress node. You get to change the order of your opcodes. So maybe we follow the order of the opcodes. Um, that has to get defined. Um, to Greg's point, um, while I understand that IOAM may happen, um, act in several places in the forwarding of the packet, um, the reality, harsh reality here is that we don't get to actually continually process the MNA uh, actions. Um, and we also can't turn back time. Um, if you ask us for the ingress timestamp, you're not very likely to get an ingress timestamp for when the first byte of the packet arrived because we didn't know we needed a timestamp much more likely to get a timestamp of when we actually process the MNA header. Um, similarly, when you, if you ask for an egress timestamp, you might get the a timestamp that's stuffed in at the last second, um, but it's not because we're processing the MNA header on the output, it's because we've carried some metadata around and that metadata was actually discovered back when we parsed the the packet back at the input uh, so there's some challenges here and we shouldn't forget those thank you okay uh, jagan uh, yeah yeah thank you uh so i, want, I just want to bring back uh, the low uh, example like if you have an um in stack uh, uh nai uh, for clearing the statistics. And then the same, at the same time, if IOM wants to collect the statistics, right? So then actually the ordering must be uh, uh, specified. So I think uh, uh, in this case, it might be required to specify the order. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jagan. Uh, Greg, you're next. Yes. Um... Tony, I, I understand that uh, the problem you, you're uh, describing, um, I'm familiar with implementation that uh, notes uh, their time-related information on each incoming packet so that it might be used uh, if so uh, required. Okay, so I consider that to be implementation uh, property. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Greg. How are you? Yes, also uh, respond to Tony's comments that uh, I think the 
a standard specific specification only uh, provides the desired behavior or uh, expected data uh, for for some 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 type of data. Uh, in terms of this uh, timestamp, okay, they they just uh, they can only clearly specify what it means. But uh, as for how accurate it will be and uh, how it's actually implemented in in each device, is uh, up to the uh, implementer, and uh, of course, depend on their uh, different uh, implementation technologies. There could be different accuracy or. Uh, the you know the error could be even large, but that's not the intent of the uh, uh, the, the specification. Also, is um, cannot be controlled by the specification. Okay, thank you for you, uh, Jimmy. You're next. Yeah, <clears throat> I just want to ask that. Uh... Um, before we consider slicing as an action in the packet, uh, if we only consider IOM and the normal packet forwarding, do you think we need to specify the order between the IOM and the packet forwarding? The normal packet forwarding treatment. Okay, uh, is it a question, Jimmy? Sorry, I didn't... yeah, yeah. This is a question I want to ask, and uh, actually, uh, uh, the the reason I ask this is uh, because uh, I consider that the slicing does not change the uh, packet forwarding operation that much, and uh, 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 Tony mentioned that the slicing changes. That's how actually it does not the slicing just to specify the. Uh, foreign treatment uh, after you determine the next hop based on the, like the destination or the top label. And and actually the for IOM, the context of the IOM uh, is determined by other information carrying the packet, like the label stack or the destination address. And for slicing, uh, if we consider as IOM with slicing, actually slicing information uh, can be just a, another type of the context information provided to the IOM, but uh, this does not mean that uh, the order of the slide, uh, the order of the action between IOM and the packet forwarding need to be changed once you introduce the slicing to the as an action to the packet. So this is a my understanding is still that I, the order of IOM and that slicing is. Uh, there are now dependency on the order of the actions. Okay, okay thank you. Rakesh, you're next. Um, yeah, this is just to um, uh, to add to what Tony was saying that order must be specified by the ingress node. Um, you, we may have some uh, network actions uh, with dependencies. So if you have, let's say, A depends on B, B depends on C, but then C depends on A. So uh, it may be, once we have a good chunk of network actions, uh, there may not be uh, a clear order uh, because of interdependencies and expecting ingress to always put the right order. Uh, there might be more things that could be needed on the transit nodes or egress node might be that you need to do parse, um, parse the, the, all of the network actions that need to be done and uh, look at the expected behavior and then uh, make sure that the expected behavior is achieved, right? So um, there is one more dimension to it than just the ordering of network actions. Thanks. Okay, uh, Tony, you're next. Jimmy, uh, I guess we completely disagree. Um, the uh, network slicing definitely can change the next top. Uh, it says so in the text. Um, I think that having the wrong next top in the trace is not very helpful. Uh, so it would be um, disturbing to me if we did IOAM before considering slicing and before considering forwarding. Um, so yes, you have to deal with forwarding first, regardless um, uh, for IOAM. Um, to Rakesh, um, yes, absolutely, we have to have determinism. That is the whole point. 
and yes, the, the implementations have to figure it out. And the solution certainly may install rules that are not under the control of the ingress LSR. That's, uh, or LER, that's not the point. The point is that we have to have determinism and the solution has to say something and it has to be fully specified. So we have interoperability. Thank you. Okay, Rakesh, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I agree, Tony. As long as it's not uh, strictly based on the ingress ordering of it, but there is also the solution uh, expected behavior comes into the picture, then yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Agree. Thanks. Okay, go ahead, Tony. Uh, so you cannot just simply have expectations. You have to document them. If it's not written down, implementers will not know it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, we don't have any other hands raised. Uh, we'll go back to the agenda in the last uh, couple of minutes that we have. And uh, very quickly talk about item number four. Uh, so there were a couple of drafts that were uh, the authors requested um, progressing on adoption. Uh, the chairs discussed that on Tuesday's meeting, and and we wanted to let you know that um, you know until we have a clear view of uh, the assigned action item that we talked about, um, and we have some concerns with regards of uh, progressing adoption uh, for now. So we are waiting on that, and I remember Loa had another. Um, comment um maybe i'll ask him to remind me of it and my memory is not helping um but what could you uh, it was actually in the ordering uh, uh part also I, I don't i haven't thought about it after this discussion i need to check it but uh i think that uh, we need to check what that we have have a full agreement on, or kind of well, at least a rough consensus on what we say about the ordering and how actually documents align with that. Um, but I still think that there's a way to, a bit to go there. You remember, I drew, I draw the picture with the uh, network action A using PSD and network action. B using ISD. Network yeah. action A using PSD, network action B using ISD, and network action C using uh, PSD. And uh, the uh, document needs to specify how it behaves in those cases. Indeed, I remember now that you had, uh, you know, none of the documents talk about. Uh, ordering lack of or should it be uh, uh, consistent ordering or should we be um, um, uh, agnostic to ordering so in either case the none of the i don't think the solution documents talk about that and we do want to make sure that what we agree on is mentioned before we progress to adoption okay I I'm done with the item number four, and I don't think we have any other business. So, and we are right on time. So it, it was a good discussion today. Um, I think the exercise that Tony started is a good one, and uh, it it is worth uh, taking it on the list as well if uh, if people uh, feel like it. Uh, but you know we we can also talk about it next time we meet. Uh, if nobody has any other comment, I'll stop the recording right here. Okay. <laughs>